Hey everyone. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another episode of Eigen Bros. Mm -hmm. So guys, we just want to make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, check out the website, eigenbros.com, Eigen Bros on Twitter, Eigen Bros on Instagram, Eigen Bros 2 on TikTok. Although we haven't uploaded on TikTok in ages, but no. still check it out. Yeah, We'll, we'll <laughs> and, get active uh, on it soon. Yeah, and uh, patrons, guys, uh, we thank you so much. We appreciate your support. And you guys, mm -hmm. if you're interested in being a patron, just check out patreon.com slash eigenbros. Mm -hmm. Donate $1. That's yes. all we need. That's all we need. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So as yeah, the title yeah. suggests, we're covering physics equations. Indeed, indeed. So Fam famous physics equations? Uh, I mean, famous maybe for physicists, but yeah. some people who might be in the audience who don't know physics might be illuminated yeah. today on some of these things. And it, I hope it's enough to follow, right? Yeah. Because, you know, when we start talking math, then you start to yeah. alienate people a little bit, especially enthusiasts who don't have the yeah. background. You know what I mean? Yeah, we kind of did talk about, uh, I think we, I think our previous episodes maybe kind of hinted at this, but there was a listener that suggested this topic i believe yeah you're right yeah yeah yeah. should we shout him out i don't have mine pulled up no i, I don't know but you know who you are <laughs> shout out to you <laughs> sorry man we would pull you up but uh yeah but our internet's having issues i don't want to be <laughs> wasting time staring at my no phone. We, we got this we got this so uh can you guess Wh which one would you guess terrence what would be number one for you so i actually did a poll oh, on twitter you? yes to see which one people would pick mm -hmm. and uh yeah, they picked one that was pretty solid, I think. But which, um, was? which one do you think? Because I already know the the answers. I'll tell you what the choices were. Oh, I'm gonna guess. Oh, uh, you gonna guess the choices too? Yeah, yeah. Do that. Yeah, yeah. So equation? there's four. There's four choices I could do on Twitter. Schrodinger equation. Okay, I'm gonna let you get your guesses out. That's one. Okay. Uh, energy mass equivalents, Einstein's. Mm, okay. Um. Hmm. What what high high certainty principle? Okay. Okay. I'm I'm thinking about all the the, the pop sci kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. all the more all the more popular <laughs> equations that people like. You got two quantum ones on there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um The thing is Maxwell's equations aren't really they're a set of equations, so they don't I don't know if they count. Okay. But uh but that's like four. I'd be willing to count it. As one singular entity? Well, because you can think of the Maxwell's equations as one equation if you write it as the electromagnetic yeah, tensor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I consider that as one equation. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Okay. Sure. You want to include it? We'll include it. Okay. That's four. Uh, and then Do you want to put one more for good measure? Oh, that's four? Yeah, Newton's gravity. Gravity. All right. So F equals MA or F, equal, yeah. F equals MG or? Uh, MA. Okay, MA. Yeah. Pretty damn interesting, but you only guessed one of them right. What the fuck? <laughs> but those are the only options I put up there. So there's really okay. my own personal choices. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So really, there's no wrong answers here, folks. No um, but bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad One's today. Pissed. I'm mad today. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in the mood. So let me tell you the ones I put up. So I put up the Lagrange equation. Euler Lagrange. Oh, oh, you went fancy. You said the yeah. Lagrange equation. I know, <laughs> I know physics better than, than all you commoners. I did go fancy. <laughs> then I went number two, Dirac equation. Come on, bro. Why, why are you flexing <laughs> on people, man? <laughs> why are you flexing on people? Well, I just thought these are my top equations. Oh, you know, you know yeah, oh, I try to think of mo the most general ones. You're asking people, oh, you know, phys you, you like physics? Tell me for the top four physics equations that you know. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I bet you don't even know these. Like you're just trying to measure. Like you know, I also the, wanted to keep it interesting too. You know, you're saying all the obscure <laughs> physics equations. Well, you know, some of these. A lot of our audience is also undergrads too, and they oh, want to kind of. True. They want to, you know, look flex on their friends and whatnot. Yeah, but okay. cool. So, right, you know, fair enough. They're like, yeah, I know about the direct equation from the Eigenbrose podcast. All right. so. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right. Number three was the um, the electromagnetic uh, the electromagnetic um, tensor. Yeah. So, like you kind of said, and then the other one, the yeah. last one was Einstein field equations. Yeah, yeah. So I did go hard on the. Uh, yeah, you, you kind of hard did. on the equation yeah, front yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> what about the standard model equation? Oh damn! <laughs> now you're really just being a dick <laughs> <laughs> with that one. That one's yeah. just fucking horrendous. I know. I know. <laughs> It's hideous. That's the. I guess that is the most important one because that's really like the theory of everything that we have right now. Yeah. The closest thing to it. But I mean, but man, it's probably it wrong. Yeah, it's probably well, it's, maybe it's not wrong, oh, but yeah, it's like yeah. 
it could be better. It's yeah, yeah. There's definitely going to be a better one because I think there are stuff that they have observed that they still can't fit into the standard model, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll, well, we'll, the thing, the big thing is the whole um, trying to to um, bridge the gap between gravity and yeah. uh, relative general so, relativity. So we'll leave it as an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll hopefully throw that on the YouTube video of that yeah. nasty looking uh, Lagrangian <laughs> for the uh, standard model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but so so walk me through why your choices, why you made the choices you made. So basically, I kind of thought in terms of, okay, what are the big regimes of physics, right? Because yeah. you can pretty much divide physics up into regions, right? Mm-hmm. You, you've got the classic little chart of, you know, things in the classical region, things in the quantum scale, yeah. which is really small. Then we've got things in the relativistic regime, which is really fast. And then you could also think on things in the general relativistic regime, which is like, um, I guess, large fast objects. Oh. General relativity. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like large objects that can bend space time. Yeah. So you can kind of divide physics up into those regimes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, okay, what's the best classical mechanics equation? And of course, Le- Euler-Lagrange is pretty much yeah. the key all day, right? You can solve um, the equations of motion with the Euler-Lagrange equation yeah. so well. And then, of course... And all the- you need... So you're making the argument that that's an, a really important one because all you really need is two two expressions, right, to really solve the equations of motion in your system right yeah because you just need a the kinetic uh, energy expression right yeah. and then b the uh, potential energy which expression. is usually always one half mv squared right yeah pretty much for the yeah, yeah. for the kinetic so you pretty much are given one, one al- automatically almost <laughs> just figure out what the v is and yeah. then or the potential in this case yeah 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 and yeah yeah and then just figure out the potential so it's really like you know, it's just it's just the It is uh, kind of beautiful in that way. Yeah, it's just really one of the greatest equations you can have. Yeah, the hard part is literally trans like figuring out the coordinate system. These the coordinate system uh of your choosing that's going to make the problem easiest to solve. Right. Right, yeah. right. And also the other reason why Lagrangian kind of or the Euler Lagrange equations kind of is number one actually, and that was also the the top one on the Twitter poll too. What it kind of smoked everyone? The Euler Lagrange. Oh yeah. So I asked people what was the most important equation. Yeah. And pretty much Euler Lagrange dominated. Yeah. Um, because it also applies to other things too, like quantum field theory uses the Euler Lagrange equation, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they do. I won't say that with certainty because I haven't taken quantum field theory, but I'm yeah. pretty damn sure. Yeah, they use it. They because uh, the Euler Lagrange equation allows us to like look at like action. Oh, right. And you like, took uh, many body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've, you did use it a lot uh, in that class? No, just conceptually. Okay. <laughs> they just, con- I mean, bro, it's like any physics class. They just throw you, throw you in right, there. Throw like, you to the wind. This, yeah, they're like, this is, you've seen this, right? And we're like, no. And they're like, yeah. well, know this. And then they just You're like, of- did I learn anything in this class? <laughs> I hope. It's, it's just an incredible survey of topics. And like, you, you just kind of just like, okay, all right, I guess I have to know this. So. Mm. Yeah. But also the many body physics was kind of probably like baby QFT, I'd imagine. It is, yeah. Okay. Uh it's like it's like QFT with the mic with like a uh not a microscope, but it's like a magnifying, magnifying. lens. No, okay. Uh, okay. Specifically in, in condensed matter. So Right, right. Yeah. It's very very uh particular. Um it's not like the grandiose kind of mm-hmm. wow, the universe is so right. big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's but, uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the the Lagrangian is important because it allows you to um, look at this import, very important concept in in physics mm-hmm. called action and minimizing action. Mm-hmm. And uh, one we've talked about this. It's kind of one of these uh, real touchy topics we like to step around because <laughs> Terrence uh, Terrence thinks he doesn't get it, but he does. He, I, I, just... I, I, not, I don't like it still. <laughs> I don't like it still. One day I will. I will. One day he will feel comfortable. I understand it if I understand it. But I don't. The th- the, yeah, he doesn't feel comfortable <laughs> with it because the units yeah. don't make sense. <laughs> it, well, it's just it's just these. It's one of these high level concepts again. The equations I also selected were kind mm-hmm. of real mathematical. Yeah, they're getting into the abstract the abstract, the abstract layer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why they're so powerful, right? Because yeah, usually yeah. the math, real mathematically heavy equations are real general and they start to apply in this really crazy across the board ways. And, yeah, which and is great. A lot of times, but the problem with that is though, 
the actual meanings become really abstract in a way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of are grasping at what the hell does this mean again, even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then that's and an interesting thing is you mentioned the F equals M A, mm-hmm. which is the classic Newton's equation. Yeah. A huge leap because he, you know, assumed that or he defined force as mass times acceleration. You know, and some people back in the days were defining it as mass times velocity and they had this yeah. debate for hundreds of years and, you know, whatnot. But um, you can actually derive F equals MA from the Euler-Lagrange equation. Yeah, they're just a f- pinky pinky up version of yeah. Euler- <laughs> F equals MA. Right, which is why I also didn't include F equals MA because I was like, the Euler-Lagrange, you Captures can derive that from it. Yeah, yeah, it does so, capture it, yeah. for sure. But yeah, so the next one was... No, no, we're not done with it, dude. Oh, okay, you want to still talk Lagrange? Yeah, All dude. Right, I ahead, mean, it, it's like you can... I mean, it's, it's so important. Like, I think uh, what makes it... Sure powerful is that um you know i think i think the oil lagrange equations came first and then the hamilton hamiltonian equation came came Second. from the limitations of the lagrangian right i think so, you're right so by the way the lagrangian is like it, it, the units of it are purely energy like it's a way we we write down energy well it's energy and time huh it's the energy units? and time right lagrangian no, 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 I'm talking about oh, the purely Lagrangian, Lagrangian yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, just purely. Yeah, Lagrangian. I think you're right. I think it's just yeah. purely energy units. Yeah. yeah. And I'm saying like it's it, it the difference between Lagrangian and Hamiltonian or the like, Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus the potential and the right. Hamiltonian is the total energy. It's like Right. And this is one of these things also when you're an undergrad, <laughs> you're like, why <laughs> why kinetic minus potential also? It's like it seems so random. Yeah. Uh and the thing is it's like it has to do with action. I, I it also has to do with like clever math tricks too. Mm-hmm. So like you may think that there's some deep meaning behind the minus sign, but really it's not super deep. It's like it actually falls out from the math. You've heard like multiple reasoning? Yeah, I've seen multiple derivations. Yeah. Nothing that stuck with me to explain it in a simple way. Mm-hmm. So I'm unfortunately for those listening, I'm not I'm not gonna be able to give you much. He's gonna send insight. you on a, he's gonna send you on a quest. Yeah. You can go on a quest and figure it out because mm-hmm. like you can look at it on Stack Exchange, I'm sure. Yeah. You could probably Google it, why the minus sign. It's a common question. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody <laughs> thinks like, oh, like, ooh, like total energy is T plus U or kinetic plus potential, yeah, but yeah. why is this Lagrangian T minus U? Yeah. And then you might think, oh, because it's minimizing the action or yeah. minimizing the action. Sorry for the people who don't know physics. <laughs> We're kind of getting up there, but yeah, yeah. Um, minimizing the action, you're trying to find the low, the least, or the smallest value of energy, basically. So it's like the sh- the path of least resistance. Yeah, you can and, think of and, it. and typically physicists like the way they map it is like they'll have quote unquote energy mm-hmm. on the y axis, yeah, and then time on the x axis. Right. Exactly. And then so. Like, you know, physicists employ integrals mm-hmm. to see like areas under curves and stuff. Right. But you're so to start off, you're starting from point A to point B exactly. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So you're starting in at space. some time yeah. one exactly. and then the some and then you end later at some time two. Exactly. Yeah. So you're always going in the positive direction for time because, mm-hmm. you know, we don't go backwards in time, at least not in any normal physics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And unless um, you're tachyon. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then so then you are trying to dr- you draw a world line from yeah. point A to point B. Yeah, yeah. And drawing that world line, you can have many different ways or paths exactly, to get from yeah. point A to point B. Well, if you're the particle, right? If you're like uh-huh. the particle and you're like, and, and you're finding like your, not your finding, but it's like your physics, I think nature does this calculation. At least that's mm-hmm. the kind of philosophy behind it, right? You're in a position. Yeah. How does, how do you, or like you're a ball sitting on top of a hill. Yeah. How yeah. do you find the path? Of That's, least resistance. Uh, yeah, of getting right. you down the fastest, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So nature just finds these things. Nature's yeah. doing Lagrangians all day. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. With ease. So <laughs> it's like um, we're just trying to capture that magic equation. Yeah. And we did. Some yeah, Lagrange yeah. captured it. Lagrange, yeah, yeah. And apparently Euler. I don't know how Euler was involved, but he just – I but think doubt, Euler well, just makes everything. Yeah, so. honestly, <laughs> Euler probably came up with it first. And then, <laughs> right. and then Lagrange is like – I mean, I guess I have to give him credit. He did it by himself. <laughs> right. You know? God of math is basically Euler's, so yeah, just assume yeah, that yeah. he did everything. Somehow he did everything before yeah. everyone else, yeah. and then everybody else caught on later somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for sure. um, yeah, um, yeah. So you're minimizing that action. So basically, what that means is you're finding the path in which you use the least amount of energy from yeah. point A to point B in some sense. And graphically, physicists do this, like I was saying. One hour later. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, there's a cutoff here, but uh, anyway, as I was saying, yeah, yeah. graphically, this is represented by 
energy versus time mm-hmm. and you know how we physicists like to employ integrals to find areas under the curve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know there's this little path or this little graph thing right you and know. the area and the integral under the curve is the same thing as just finding the area yeah under, under the, that curve yeah 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 so minimizing that in in theory would be minimizing your path or whatever right so or you're finding, finding the least energy path or something. Yeah, yeah. I know it's more complicated than that. It I, is. And that's why there's I don't more like the layers because yeah. there's also some misnomers there. Like, yeah, there are. They say that the action or finding the Lagrangian of yeah. the action, you're not minimizing. You're not really doing you're that. You're not yeah. minimizing. You're like yeah. finding the minimal stationary points or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a lot of technicality to it. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah. But that's kind of the treatment that you get. You get you're you're given when you're like uh, an undergrad. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, I'm trying to see what it, it says exactly, so I don't yeah. sound stupid. No, you're good. So like, um, so yeah, the, so you have that, but that's kind of where the minus sign is supposedly. That's one of the one of the uh, rationales why the minus sign is there. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's completely accurate, but yeah, I think there's something there. So, so it's a principle of least action. Or more accurately, the principle of stationary action, Mm -hmm. so that's what I was getting at, Mm -hmm. is a variational principle that when applied to the action of a mechanical system can be used to obtain the equations of motion for the system. It was historically called least least because its solution requires finding the path of motion in space that has the least value. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So the principle of stationary action is more accurate somehow. I don't really get that yet, though. It's just like so a. It's just this. like a. <laughs> they want. They want to be like. It's just physicists being like, well, actually. You know, <laughs> yeah. Picking up their glasses. Right. <laughs> well, actually, so. what you really mean to say is, <laughs> this is a variational principle in action. <laughs> yeah. So you want to be careful and be yeah. weary, I guess, if if you if you end up in running into an argument with somebody who's like. You know, mathematically, that's this is actually what's happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's anyway. that's kind of one of the reasons why you you have that 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 equation is so fundamentally important. Like it gives you the equations yeah. of motion of whatever system and mm-hmm. that you're trying to solve. And um, it's and, basically like the master equation of physics yeah. in all fields, pretty much. Yeah. You can even use it in quantum mechanics. Just yeah. People don't use the Lagrangian because um, Hamiltonian's better because it yeah. has momentum as parameter yeah. um, instead of you know uh, the velocity, which is useful in quantum mechanics. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's it's there's some discrepant there's some reasons reasoning behind it, but Lagrangian is kind of like the bread and butter. It might be the end all be all. Yeah, it's the bread big, and butter. Big big one. Wait, you're saying in ha- the, the the only reason why Hamiltonian? Oh, you're saying there are multiple reasons why Hamiltonian is used in quantum? Yeah, yeah. But yeah I'm yeah. pretty sure you can use Lagrangians in quantum. It just would be really stupid or something. I I think certain it's, uh, I think there's some commutation relations that kind of get fucked up. I want to sure. say I'm not going to make any claims <laughs> because I never tried it, so I don't even know <laughs> what I would be saying. <laughs> but uh, but the main reason that I remember being is that you know it just it. Hamilton, you know, in quantum mechanics, it's easier to talk about momentum and yeah, uh, yeah. position as different. Right. Um, and that comes from the whole Heisenberg, Heisenberg uncertainty, uncertainty, which is one of the equations you which named. Which is one of the equations I named because, yeah. I mean, come on. It's pretty it's pretty damn important, right? That, that one that one kind of shook, yeah. shook it the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's probably one of the few equations we know is not even really an equation either because it's technically it's an inequality. inequality. Yeah. 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 And we don't really use many inequalities in physics, right? Mm-hmm. At least not ones that we'll remember. No. Um, and yeah, Heisenberg's Berg uncertainty is one of those because it's basically, the equation is um, showing you that... Uh, that um, The standard... That div- it basically, the, the, concept, the conceptual understanding is that yeah. you cannot measure the particle's position and its momentum at the exact same time with absolute precision. Yeah. So you're going to have to sacrifice... Knowing something about one or the other, depending on how you're measuring it. Yeah. So it's really a kind of deep, you know, quantum mechanical phenomenon or quantum mechanical concept. Um, yeah, which yeah. is why uh, it's kind of it's really important. It's a really important one because you can even think of it as like a quantum axiom in some sense. Yeah. I think. I yeah. Think. Some, I, I wouldn't know how to derive it. it you it, probably can though. 
there's like a saying like a common well they were saying a, a common misconception is that um the fact that momentum and position can never be known both known exactly is that mm-hmm. some people think it's a measurement problem yeah but it's actually but, uh, i think it's more fundamental yeah it that. is yeah because uh, grant sanderson three blue and brown did a video about this mm-hmm. showing that it really had to do with wave mechanics mm-hmm. so it was more it was something more math- exactly. mathematically fundamental more fundamental yeah, yeah for sure and the wave equation is a whole nother fundamental equation that i, I yeah. feel like is important but yeah um but yeah the right hand side of the inequality usually like it, it has to do with like uh planck's constant mm-hmm. you know it's like really really tiny value times mm-hmm. 10 to the what 23rd negative 23 negative 23 yeah, yeah. 23 6.69 6, i want to say times 10 to negative 23 is a planck's constant yeah, yeah or is that that might be the reduced planck's constant which is h bar i don't know i think so because i don't really use planck's constant that often just nah. h set h equal to one bro come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> Pleb. That's a uh, natural units joke yeah, for yeah. Uh, the people unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, that that's kind of an important relation, and uh, mm-hmm. that that one did shake the foundations of uh, our understanding because it, I, yeah, like you're saying, it showed um, the world is more. There's more of limits to the foundation of like f- the fabric of reality than mm-hmm. than what uh, is given. Yeah, there's some spooky stuff that pops out. Yeah, spooky. <laughs> Einstein's, uh, yes. you know, his, his He's uh, scared words. of quantum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The quantum boogeyman. That's right. <laughs> no. He hides behind the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so the next one was what? What did I say? It was um, Dirac equation. Yeah. So we've talked about Dirac equation several times just in Bro, the context Bro, I don't know of, enough about Dirac. Equation. I don't either, but the reason I chose it was because it's basically the relativistic version of Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's equation. equation. Oh, so, so you're capturing two for one. Yeah, because I'm assuming, mm-hmm. although I don't know for sure, because I have not worked with the Dirac equation, because mm-hmm. in our school, the Dirac equation, you really only work with it when you're doing QFT. Yeah. Um, I I, imag- I guess you didn't work with it in many body. No. Okay. But you're supposed to do it when you... Not really, I guess. Okay, yeah. You were supposed you're to... You're given a Hamiltonian, but... Okay, okay. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, you're supposed to do it when you're doing um, QFT or something related along those lines. Um. Mm-hmm. So I assume that you can reduce the Dirac equation down to the Schrodinger equation yeah. by setting some parameters, you know, because the the Schrodinger the Dirac equation basically introduces the whole matrices. You know, I think it's. Oh no, we do work with the Dirac. I've have okay, with the Dirac okay. Equation. You just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It introduces I'm like, oh, the, the matrices. Math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember the trauma of the math. I right. Don't rem- I don't remember that actually. <laughs> so what I would imagine is if you just set the um, matrices to like identities or something i don't know yeah. what it would be i'm just guessing yeah what you just somehow make it into the reduced version i would imagine it probably collapses yeah. into the schrodinger equation is that true do you could you recall that i'm gonna say yes okay <laughs> well don't don't say no, yes no, if no. You don't it's, know. it's like uh because i don't know i i it just comes from basically when you whenever you have relativistic effects mm-hmm. it, it, and apply that to the schrodinger equation yeah like you yeah. have one over c's i don't know it's like uh uh, I think Dirac, but it wasn't super obvious because no, people cause tried Dirac, doing a bunch of different things. Like right. Klein Gordon equation tried to use the yeah. Dirac equation, or I'm sorry, the Schrodinger equation more directly yeah. by just like squaring it or something. And it's like a it's like a um, it's like a reduced version of the Dirac equation or something. I well, believe. yeah. Well, the thing, I, if I remember correctly, Dirac had this uh, his his like kind of conception was that he was trying to combine E and M. Yeah, like in into quantum mechanics, so he was just right. kind of like, okay, let me try to merge these two. Okay, and then he okay. came up with the Dirac equation because he knew, like, uh, well, if it's moving fast as fast as the speed of light, then yeah. if you have a particle that moves about the speed of light, then this is what you should get. Mm-hmm. So him combining that, you end up with the Dirac equation, which is looks fairly simple. Mm-hmm. Looks like the Schrodinger equation, but um, now you're describing like a particle that um, moves at the speed of light. Right, and the interesting thing about the Dirac equation was you yeah. needed to add in the spin for it to work. Yes, exactly. Which is why they were really yeah. happy with that because that was also one of the things that people were trying to understand how it fits in yeah. into the equations at the time was where spin comes in because yeah. it was you know it was actually found from the Stern-Dirac experiment. Yeah. Um, 
that ex- that it existed. It so existed for were, a long time. Yeah, people were like, uh, <laughs> how does how it fit, does fit, fit in your equation? Yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. <laughs> that was like a nice monumentous yeah. moment when they found out that it was actually uh, needed in the Dirac equation. Yeah. So that's why I put the Dirac equation on there. Of course, we talked about that in a bunch of the Alien podcasts as well. Did we? <laughs> yeah, because we talked about it with Salvatore Pice because it was derived with the um, with the uh, Dirac C. Because oh, Salvatore yeah, yeah. Pice was talking about the separation between uh, the vacuum polarization energy. True, true, true. And then we talked about the Dirac equation. We talked about it several times. Yeah, yeah. We probably brought it up um, here and there. Yeah. But, of course, that's a little bit kooky. Um, <laughs> oh, bringing him up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the people who are more uh, the physics audience and not so much the alien conspiracy audience, yeah, um, yeah it's... Don't worry too much about it if you don't know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Salvatore Pais is just a guy who claims that he invented, like, all these revolutionary technologies. Yeah, why doesn't the government pay spot? us to come up with crazy, wild <laughs> yeah. ideas? Me and you? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I could come up with something just as ridiculous. You, you, what, do you have anything on the top? Off the um, dome? No, but the paper that he wrote was also kind of like... I, f- <laughs> I think we both kind of poo-pooed on it but right right but, yeah anyway you can watch be that fun video to do like us. movie like you know they get they hire movie guys mm-hmm. or physicists for movies yeah to like insult for movies mm-hmm. like they did for like the watchman for dr manhattan or they'll right. do like interstellar you know, they hired Inst- uh, interstellar for the black hole stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't it kip thorne, kip thorne yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that'd be fun yeah that would be cool <laughs> kip thorne what a cool name yeah too cool to too cool to be a physicist anyway <laughs> uh the next equation um it's Bella Thorne's uh, dad. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> Is it really? I'm just. Oh damn! I no. would. I would imagine not, but maybe. That I don't would know. be quite the. That would be quite the revelation. That would be kind of interesting. Um, huh? no, but uh, I guess the next equation I might is. Uh, Only fans of that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. The next equation is uh, the Mac- Maxwell's equations, right? You, uh, don't you think? So, I put the electromagnetic um, tensor. Tensor. Yeah. Because there's actually something that maybe undergraduates, you guys probably are familiar with Maxwell's equations, but yeah. you may not be familiar with the electromagnetic tensor, which actually is like you'll cover the, at the end of the chapter of, if you do Griffiths, you'll cover. Oh, it he, at the he end. does that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe you will be there. Chapter twelve. Okay. Yeah. Beautifully, so, succinctly put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of this nice one where it's like it condenses Maxwell's equations all into a single equation. And yeah. I believe it even entails, the you can even derive the Lorentz force out of yeah. that too, which Hell is really yeah. a nice one, right? Which is the one people forget. Yeah. It's like yeah. the bastard child. Yeah. <laughs> electromagnetic. <laughs> but we use it literally all the time in yeah. natural physics, you know, <laughs> and any and a lot of E&M. So, yeah. Yeah. So this one, uh, this electromagnetic tensor is a really nice one. Yeah. I would say, um, I would say Lorentz force is like the fifth Ninja Turtle, like the Ninja Turtle that no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like, what is her name? Venus? <laughs> whatever like so you, you don't know. even know there was a ninja turtle uh, uh yeah. female at one point <laughs> i think go. her name was venus fucked up the whole artist uh <laughs> you know the whole artist oh the the Raphael, michael yeah yeah because they're yeah. all you know painters renaissance artists yeah yeah and i was like why could they just call her you know like um a female a female painter like of know, the frida or something yeah or, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or from or another era, had to be right? in, yeah oh, gotcha, i guess because gotcha. maybe they wanted it in the renaissance i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> there had to be at least one female Renaissance artist, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, but but yeah, that's kind of how I feel. They treat Lorentz force, <laughs> right? Um, which, yeah, like you hear Maxwell's equations when you hear, when you think of E and M, you think Maxwell's equations. But you're right, Lorentz mm-hmm. force is one of those that's not really included. Does is Biot-Savart law also? Ah, uh, it's derived right from Maxwell's equations. Biot-Savart law. I think you can. Right, it's like I boundary say. conditions or something. Let me think. I think it's like current on uh I think so. I think it is. You might be right. I don't yeah. know. I haven't I can't really remember, lately. but that one popped yeah. into my head. Yeah, I'm gonna I, say I yes. Know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I think you might be right. Yeah. I think I had tried to derive it before, but it wasn't really elegant, so I don't remember. Yeah, I, don't I think, think I, I think we were tasked to Maxwell's. derive it a couple times. Yeah, but it was during when we were taking undergraduate courses. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think we did anything elegant with like Maxwell's or yeah. anything. I think it was from first principles. You sh- the idea is that you should be able to derive um, pretty much anything you need from the set from those set of equations mm-hmm. in 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 E and M like yeah. Maxwell's equations and then uh, uh, Faraday's law. Right. Because people would say that I mean, Lawrence, electromagnet, or at least the claim is people say that electromagnetism mm-hmm. is basically like a finished 
product. Yeah. You know, it's a it finished, is. it's a, it's like one of the few complete places theories. in f- physics that people will consider finished. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Complete, um, complete, nice little bow on it. Yeah. Um, you know, a theory is complete whenever you have like a master equation, like, yeah. the, like yeah. the, the tensor, the representation of, um, yeah. The, the, the electromagnetic yeah. tensor. Yeah. 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 So electro, electricity and magnetism is a really nice one to learn, mm-hmm. especially if you're trying to just know a nice little um, yeah. area of physics. If you're, uh, if you know, if you just want to learn something for yeah. fun or if you're just interested in learning more. And I'll tell you why. Do you remember why they're tensorized? And I've just made that a verb, but do you, do you know why they're tensorized? I just imagine because that's how you can get it condensed down into a single equation. Well, yeah, but GR, right? So in GR, like they... So you're leading to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> do you, shall we jump to the next yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Well, because I mean, in GR, yeah, like... Because in GR, right, they... That's that's where the math of like tensor, tensor math came out of. Yeah. So that would well, be... Well, physicists are using it, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, so that leads me to the Einstein field equations. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you're hinting at the stress energy tensor. Yeah, yeah. So the stress energy tensor encapsulates yeah. the... Um, electromagnetic yeah. tensor, yeah, and the frustration the fe- Maxwell's and the frustration of calculating something with that many terms. Oh yeah, this shit gets hellish. <laughs> this is where you get introduced to Christoffel symbols and that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get alphabet soup, <laughs> that's when people really feel like physicists because you're like, yeah. oh shit, I'm doing yeah. real math over here with I'm, these tensors. Yeah, I'm summing over. <laughs> I'm summing over. <laughs> I'm summing All these repeatedly. Indices. Yeah, I'm summing repeatedly over these these terms. Right, you um, get alphas and betas and. You know, got Latin and Greek characters all mixed together. It looks like hell. It's just fancy accounting. I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, I honestly hate it because I'm like, I hate yeah. keeping track of all this bullshit. But it yeah. does make you feel like, oh, this is like legit yeah. physics now. Yeah, like, if you're a math, like if you have a mathematical brain, mm-hmm. I think you're often inclined to just say, you write down the whole tensor, and then yep. you're like, let's go everything for else it. is trivial. Yeah, no, no, you just say, oh like, yeah, it's trivial. No, that'd be more of a conceptual brain. But the mathematicians do that. Like once they fu- once yeah. it's, once they find the solution, yeah. quote unquote, like and the uh, the math every if you just if you can get to the answer by just doing regular mm-hmm, math, mm-hmm. they Algebra say it's, they say it's trivial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's trivial. QED. Right. Plug it into Wolfram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel when I go into any physics problem that like has me do like any any kind any of long math. calculations. <laughs> and just like it's trivial. But anyway, that's how I felt in GR. I was like, man, this is. Because the stress energy tensor, like you're mm-hmm. saying, is like this. That's that's kind of where I'm trying to remember. Did did they like? Was it a happy coincidence, or was it a uh, something that they or Einstein or whoever? I don't know the background because yeah. uh, also with GR, you know, me and me we and you, Wong, we took only one semester, and it was yeah, like yeah. a kind of um, it was a com- combined graduate and undergraduate course. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like we kind of lost a little bit of nuance. Yeah. For some reason, schools don't really teach general relativity yeah, stuff. Weird, right? I don't know why. Like they don't really I think it's because probably because if you really need it you're going to be probably an astronomer or a yeah, um, yeah, you know yeah. someone who who deals with that astrophysics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, deals with celestial bodies. So I think yeah. they leave it for the astronomy people. Yeah. Cuz it seems like when we were in that class the astronomy people were much more familiar with these things. Yeah, they were. Like at least conceptually. Yeah. Um yeah, so they kind of just I think they just are like, "Ed, eh, we've got enough to learn, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But me and Juan took it for fun. We were like, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go in here because we had the option to either take uh, electricity and magnetism yeah, one yeah, yeah. or relativity. And we're like, fuck, E&M fuck E&M taking one. E&M one. Like, <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, already yeah. gone through that bullshit. So, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. So we took GR. And what was your question again? I'm sorry, I was ranting. Uh, the stretch energy tensor was it like a, a happy coincidence that oh. it also aligned with E and M or? You know, I don't know, man. Yeah. I wish I could tell you, but I don't know the history of it. That's what I was saying. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to say I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to get lit up in the comments. Well, anyway, well, I guess just explain the stress, stress energy tensor. So what, what, what is, do you remember what that looks like? So, yeah. So they, I think they denote it with T typically, mm-hmm. but you can denote it any way you want, of course, right? Yeah. Damn it, my. Because they do, we, if, you're, if you're an undergrad and you're listening to this, you will probably see this in Griffiths. Um, I think when he talks about electromagnetic waves and radiation, I think it's maybe chapter like eight or nine. I don't mm. really remember the chapter, but um, but he does bring up the tensor. And then I think chapter twelve is when he gets into like all the the 
the sort of compact notation mm -hmm. and uh and i think the stress energy tensor is brought up as okay like, as like a consequence to like oh they, by the way you get to have this nice equation pop out yeah but anyway well according to wikipedia it's like a very nice simple elegant equation yeah they've just got the um einstein tensor plus the gravitational or the um, cosmological constant mm -hmm. times some metric and then that equals the stress energy tensor times some other constant. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty pretty nice and um, simple, beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, the math can get really kind of heavy oh, because yeah. you're dealing with three tensors, right? Yeah. And I think the Einstein tensor and the is composed. Einstein tensor is two more tensors. Right. The Einstein tensor is composed of, I think, the Ricci tensor yeah, or something. Yeah, the Ricci curvature tensor. And then, like, a scalar, Ricci scalar tensor or something. Yeah. So... That's a little bit out of me and Juan's wheelhouse. I think we touched upon that once. No, we've maybe. done it. We've done it. It's just painful. Yeah, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of these things where I kind of did it once and forgot about it for you know yeah. forever. I mean, that's literally fit all of physics, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but the Einstein stuff is really interesting too, especially if you're a person who's interested in learning about like 3D space and the curvature of space time. Oh, it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, you get really good at understanding how to bend space. Yeah. Um, which sounds badass as fuck, right? Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is like this is like what I signed up for, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the metric tensor yeah, you're singing in the back of class. Hey professor, when are we gonna get to the bend spacey stuff? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, the physics. Yeah. Well, Terrence, you have to learn the formalism. First. Yeah. Nah, but I want to get to the Einstein shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Einstein shit is legit. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you probably have the same sentiment when you join one of the the fancy, yeah. more pop science classes. Right. But yeah, I will say it was it was very fun, like um, very interesting learning about. Um, Relativity. I think one of these. Mm. I, I think if you have the chance to take this as an elective, I would. Yeah, you get a lot of return. Yeah. Your a yeah. lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, because Einstein stuff is really just genius, and it yeah. starts from such simple assumptions. You're it like, does. damn, really you get cool. all this from that one. It's really cool. Or these few little assumptions. Yeah. That was just the beauty Scratches of it. I mean, that itch. Yeah, it really makes you realize, like, damn, Einstein was truly a fucking next level dude, and it's just mm. so simple. Yeah. So the um. Yeah, the, and the, and then the Ricci tensor and all that stuff. Of course, that's when you get really into the complicated math. Mm. Einstein, of course, didn't like that so much, but you know, <laughs> you do definitely get to learn a lot about spending a space time. But I guess I wanted to say also the metric tensor is really a fruitful one too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will call the metric tensor like it will be denoted by like g mu nu. Yeah. So mu nu would be the subscripts, and those are the yeah. tensor subscripts. You know, people got their own definitions. You can change the letters, but that's typically yeah. what I see most of the time. Yeah. And that metric tensor really is the key to, it's the key to understanding how space bends. Mm -hmm. So you can get things like black holes and stuff with the right kind of metric tensors. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can do all this kind of crazy cool space stuff when you understand how to, to manipulate the Einstein field equations properly. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, ma manipulate those metric tensors. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And that's my list, pretty much. Yeah. What do you think of my list? It sucks. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool. It's a good I think we list. went through most of your list too, because you said. Um, no, nah, we went through two of them. Because yours was Schrodinger equation. You yeah. said Heisenberg uncertainty. You said F equals M A. Yeah. And then you said what else did you say? Anything else? Uh, I think that was do you it. Remember? No, you said like five or no, something. I said yeah, maybe I said at five. least four. What was the first one? Doesn't matter, dude. Point is, <laughs> point is, we're here. We're having fun here. And yeah. uh, you got yeah. any honorable mentions? I do. I do. I have a list here. Um, I kind of want got one. I wanted to shout out. What? Um, the uh, the partition function from Statman. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so the partition function gets a little bit. Of, doesn't get much love, right? Really Statman in general doesn't get love. Even from us, and we're condensed matter dudes that yeah, basically use it. Stat mech is our like that's really our most relevant field. It kind of is, um, but why, still, why is it treated? Shits on stat. Yeah, I don't know why it's treated so poorly, but it is. <laughs> I think because there's just something. There's some part of it where you you see how elegant it actually is, but it takes so much legwork or there's like a lot of calculus. brain power to really understand how it is elegant. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of calculus that is. I guess the problem is that it feels trivial to a lot of physicists because a lot of it is based in calculus, uh, like derivatives. 
derivatives of I like guess, the but like, law I'm talking function. like the big foundational conceptual stuff because the thing the reason I didn't include it was because you can derive the partition function mm. using quantum mechanics because remember yeah. the class that we took actually no I didn't, I didn't oh you didn't you. okay Dan, well, you anyway, stop, you, you, I know, I know. <laughs> Please don't rub it but, in. That, yeah, sound, but, that but sounds the, cool as shit. Yeah, the professor we had, he literally derived it from quantum mechanics yeah. foundations. So you can derive from first principles the partition function for any kind of particle system. Yeah. You know, finite particles. So the, stat, the partition function basically tells you at its core um, how particles, how certain particles will occupy certain energy levels within a system. Mm-hmm. And those particles could be either bosons or fermions. Mm -hmm. Bosons meaning like light, you know, things that have no mass. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the gluons would count, probably not. Um, And then uh, the other particles would be fermions, like things like electrons, protons. Yeah. And then how those occupy energy states. And then from that small assumption, using quantum mechanics, you can literally derive any partition function. Yeah, I actually, wow, I I think my professor did this in undergrad, but he's like, he talked about that. Yeah. The delineation, he was just like, yeah. He's like, with quantum mechanics, you can can go, it's a two-way street, like, you can go to StatMech or just continue on to quantum mechanics. (laughs) 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 And he's like, if we stay with fermions, then we just stay on quantum mechanic road. Mm -hmm. But he's like... But when you go bosons, yeah, yeah. because you can't use... Uh, the Schrodinger equation yeah. with bosons, so that yeah, kind of yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, you, yeah, I mean, I was like, cool shit. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, that that equation is very sorely slept on. I mean, you're, when you have your partition function, mm-hmm. it's kind of the equivalent of like finding your equation, of, like setting up your Lagrangian in some way, right? Yeah, yeah. Where like, you find the master formula, basically, yeah. that t- tells you everything you want to know about your system. Yeah, because you can get like, heat capacity from it you can yep. get uh entropy from it you can get mm-hmm. um so many expressions fundamental expressions um yep. that are going to tell you with the characteristics of your system yep. just from the partition energy function. density yeah. like and all the, yeah you get everything pretty yeah. much and the partition, the partition function i mean to be fair the partition function really is just it's like i, I think there are two expressions there's like a, tenu- a continuous version and the mm-hmm. discrete version right so the discretized version is like yeah that's yeah, yeah that's like the one that's like I guess if you can actually pick your particles or whatever and count right, them right but um it's it's the sum of whatever energy states but it's e to the whatever whatever and mm-hmm. then in that exponent or exponential mm-hmm. there's a Hamiltonian right yeah right. So like I guess it kind of does boil down. That's kind of a fancy Hamiltonian. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. it's cool though, man. I yeah. mean, it's it's useful because really it's like it's it's showing you how to deal with many particle systems, right? Yeah. At the end of the day. Well, and the, and the tough part I've when I took StatMech, the tough part was writing down the Hamiltonian of a system, like because you have to like our my professor in a couple problems mm-hmm. would like give us uh give us like a six. You'd be like, okay, there are six atoms in a lattice. Find yeah. the, you know, here are the spin, you know, that there's given spins and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's like, write the Hamiltonian of this. Right. And it's like, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to write like the specific like Hamiltonian. And, and there's, yeah. And there's like different Hamiltonians for different ones. I, I think like uh, so far we've only been able to calculate the Hamiltonian for like a two dimensional lattice. Once it gets to three dimensions, it, we I have see. a really hard time. Yeah, because it's unwieldy, the number of particles you mean? Yeah, yeah, and okay. like a bunch of other stuff. If I remember correctly. Is that does that is that where like icing model and shit shows yeah, up yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Because I don't think I did that in my StatMech class. Probably you didn't not. focus on it. Yeah, your professor seemed more uh <laughs> seemed more preoccupied with blowing your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he taught us a lot of cool shit, but then I kind of missed a little bit of the like, practicality. Yeah, because yeah. I think he probably assumed that we got that already in undergraduate. But little did yeah. he know, I had a really shit <laughs> experience with StatMech. Yeah, 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 yeah. I literally passed by the skin of my teeth in StatMech, not understanding <laughs> anything. Yeah. Yeah, for um, me, for me, uh, my professor that I had uh, or that I took, he definitely emphasized the practicality, which a lot of students didn't like because, mm-hmm. I mean, you get different breed of students. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, like it. I liked it because it applied directly to my research. Like, I'm, yeah. ex- I'm an experimentalist, so, like, sometimes I may need – to uh, 
if if I'm going to fit a model, I, I need to look at the Hamiltonian. I need to maybe right. think about what the Hamiltonian looks like. Yep, yep. Um, and then you may have to consider things like entropy two or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah, if I'm yeah, it's yeah. useful for condensed matter guys for sure. Yeah, right? and, the, and and in the lab, you measure the physical observables like specific heat. You measure, yeah. you know, there are certain yeah, instrumentations 100%. that let you measure those things. Right, and, and like uh, the temp different temperature curves. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, we we get yeah. all that in yeah. real life. Yeah. So yeah, and it, and yeah, so. The partition function is is a phenomenal like. It's actually insane how it's like. Yeah. It literally contains everything you need. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy how physicists come up with shit like that. Nerds. Couldn't be me. Nerds. <laughs> uh, Wish it was me, but damn, man. No, I think another important one that is uh, also credited to Einstein is the quantization of radiation. E equals <sighs> yeah h times f. Okay, nice. This is yeah. real fundamental. Back to the basics. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's an honorable mention for sure. That's a big one, right? Right. Because that literally is like, it's not so obvious. No. That the freak that that even that photons would have a frequency. Yeah. No. Or they're quantized, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's multiple things. So Einstein basically with that equation is saying that the energy of any light particle, and that means like light. Well, we kind of borrowed like, that from De Bro a little bit, but yeah. Anyway. No, going. Einstein came before De Bro. Oh, really? Yeah, because De Bro he he. He borrowed from Einstein. Bro. The yeah. bro's before Einstein. No, I don't think so. Man. Okay, keep keep going. Keep going. Um, this up. Maybe you're right, but I don't think so. Um, but yes, yeah, so he's basically making the claim with e, uh, e equals HF. So that's energy equals Planck's constant, reduced Planck's constant times the frequency. He's saying that all light, light particles, um, their energy depends just on their frequency which is a crazy claim. So if you have red light and blue light, those two different lights have different energy. Yeah. So red light has less energy because it has a, a, um, a lower frequency, and then blue light has more energy because there's a higher frequency. And that was a huge revelation. Yeah. Because that's also the thing, like, you know, when you, see, you hear these fucking crazy-ass QAnon people talking about uh, 5G radiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you obviously don't understand basic physics because yeah, yeah. certain radiation is ionizing and others not yeah, yeah and you can only get that kind of inner you can only get that kind of damage from your skin from radiation when the frequency is high enough yeah to penetrate and fuck up you know your, your, DNA. your dna yeah so it's like it's the 5g stuff is non-ionizing radiation because yeah. it doesn't have enough energy yeah the, so it's 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 like if you just understand basic physics yeah. you just know that when certain things are not gonna yeah if you, if, true. Yeah, if you ever hear somebody <laughs> talking about worrying about 5G and they don't wear sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, just don't listen to them Just anymore. don't listen. <laughs> just be like, do you see that big star in the sky? <laughs> yeah. It's literally burning That's you That's doing alive. way more damage to you than any 5G is, so calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So No physics people, at least some basic stuff, so you don't yeah. sound like an idiot. <laughs> Please, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, okay, so... I think I think an important, also another kind of honorable mention is De Broy, De Broy, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, I, I think it's credit to De Broy, he he came up with the concept of the De Broy wavelength. Yeah, right. So that is um, v equals lambda f. Well, he just he just said yeah yeah actually yeah okay, so yeah lambda um, is equal to h over mv. Um, h over mv. Okay, yeah. Specifically yeah. that version. Or h over p. I guess h over p. Yeah. 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 That's a huge one. Yeah. And yeah. that and that one was in the 1800s. But he came up with that derivation because he saw Young's double slit experiment. He was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, what if uh, what if everything is See, that's what I was saying. Wavelength. It's like almost like he's just, what if everything's a part of one wave, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I'm saying Einstein extended <laughs> that further, I guess, into the energy scheme. Oh, so his did come first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Okay. But Einstein took it another step further. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and for the audience not familiar, Young's double slit is the classic um, double slit experiment. Yeah, you have yeah. a electron go through a double slit, mm -hmm. interferes with itself. Mm -hmm. It's the spooky quantum one where it interferes mm -hmm. and then it produces an, produces an interference pattern where yeah. you don't observe it, and then it produces just two single, um, two single, uh, what uh, you call slits? it? Slits? Uh, no, two single um, Lines? fringes yeah, yeah. when you observe it. So yeah. it's showing you that a, that a particle will literally have wave-like properties when it's not disturbed, and then it will yeah. have um, particle-like properties when it is disturbed or measured. Yeah. I don't know. 
It's all Greek to me, man. <laughs> uh, That's where quantum weirdness comes in. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally all written in Greek, which is hilarious. But uh, Einstein's energy mass equivalence was one that we didn't even talk about. That was the other one that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, Equals yeah. MC squared. Yeah, yeah. That's a big one. That's that's one that... Uh, that's a big one. I mean, when I saw that in my undergrad, I was like, you're telling me... <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me there's mass inside of my energy? <laughs> <laughs> or like... But it's like... Um, no. I, I loved... I loved like as an undergrad just being like not really understanding this equivalence. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just saying this energy, every form of energy can have mass. Like... Like, yeah. li- like, I didn't know that the, the equivalence statement was about, like... Converting yeah, and energy it, into mass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's also, like, like... Whoa, certain, everything has mass. <laughs> it's also about a certain regime. And then also... Yeah. I, exactly. I'm going to put some responsibility on the professors for not clarifying uh-huh. these points. But, um, but yeah, there's certain regimes. Like, if, if it's E equals MC squared. But, no, you can say E equals MC squared for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Anything that has rest energy... And if we want to take it further to flex a little bit more, yeah. you do the Einstein full energy that's, equation, right? That's the most, that's the more honest yeah. re, uh, representation. Yes, because yeah. E equals MC squared is just for when you have no movement. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's the rest energy of a stationary particle or something yeah, yeah. along those lines. Yeah. And then if you do the full energy expression, which is E equals MC, what is it? Equals square root of MC squared plus PC squared. Yes. Or PC, I think. No, I'm pretty sure no, it's PC like squared. PC squared, yeah. We're going off of memory We're here, fucking folks. up. It's equals MC squared whole quantity squared plus PC whole quantity squared, I believe. Mm-hmm. The whole square root of that is equal Don't split energy. the radican, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we don't deep do algebra. that. You don't want to do deep algebra. <laughs> right, we'll leave that. Yeah. But um, uh, that equation, you can use that to yeah. um, derive the um, Klein-Gordon equation if you... That's what they did, but first, what we were talking about with oh, the Schrodinger true, true. equation, yeah. the Klein-Gordon equation is like a version mm-hmm. of the Dirac equation that yeah. you can derive using the Einstein full energy expression, Yeah, yeah. if you guys can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, So yeah. all these call equations back. are linked in these cool ways. We, in the business, we call that a callback. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but- uh, That's a big one, the energy one. Yeah, yeah, that one's huge. And I think, uh, I, would, I would say that that kind of- that's kind of all of them that I, that I think that are really profound. The big ones? Yeah, yeah, because uh, HV, I mean, I guess if we want to go back to HV, did it come H, out of... Did, H new? Or H new or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, or HF, I guess. if uh, It came out of, um, was it the, the radiation thing? The black body radiation? Oh, it might have been. It was, right? I think it was. The, the, yeah. the radiation catastrophe or whatever the hell they called yeah, it? Yeah, the ultraviolet crata- catastrophe. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess it probably had to do something with absorption or emission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were able to see that, oh, this always absorbs or emits yeah, yeah. the same amount every yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the frequency. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right, Juan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, I was I just trying to capture. Story, though. Yeah, I was trying to capture like the whole. Um, there's a lot of quantum mechanic equations in there. Yeah. I, I, I guess honorable mention, the wave equation. Okay. Like yeah. not the sh- separate from the Schrodinger but equation. But the wave equation almost I think of as like this general math equation. Right. That was right? discovered by in math. In the Schrodinger's equation. equation, it's used in E and M. But it's really fundamental, man. It is. Like, think about how, how think about how we use it in, yeah. across all disciplines. It's used in every one of them, though. It's like yeah. even classical mechanics. Like it's in everything. Yeah. It's so. Yeah. It's almost too general, though. Like <laughs> it's almost like a mathematical tool in some sense. It's like, it's like uh, I think of it almost as like, oh, this is just a this is a particular differential equation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like it follows the form of the wave equation. Yeah. But that's, I think it's important. I mean, it might, some people might argue that that's a fundamental uh, part of the universe. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So I'm going to put that one up there. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to think of some ones with optics. Well, the wave equation, bro. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There you go. Summed it up. (laughs) You're welcome. But I was thinking along the lines of like Snell's Law or some shit like that. True, true. You know, the real basic ones or the focal length equations for the mirrors and whatnot. Those are a little bit less important, but like, optics doesn't get as as much love as I feel like it It should. It really doesn't. It's kind of like a forgotten thing because, you know, it fits in the realm of EM. So people are just like, fuck it, you can derive what you need <laughs> from E&M. <laughs> Although you wouldn't really do that. You wouldn't really. If, if you're <laughs> it's doing... practical. Yeah, and optics, you don't... Yeah, you, I, yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, you do. You yeah. do. You can impl- You can get Snell's Law and stuff like that. Yeah, I think you could, but it's just yeah. like really stupid to do it that way. <laughs> just, just look at it in a Shortcuts. classical mechanics way and you're yeah. fine. 
Yeah. If you're going to make the right assumptions. True. Um, but yeah, Snell's Law, um, the focal length equation. Yeah. Those are some nice little honorable mentions there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I guess, uh, oh, oh, kinematic equations. Oh, those are the nice, <laughs> nice ones. Every intro physics person should be familiar with yeah. that. I think I understand why they started. They teach kinematic equations in the beginning now. Why? Because it's so systematic, you always can just plug in the numbers and almost have to do a little bit, almost l- the least thinking of probably any other thing. Yeah. Because you know when you do physics problems, they're so variable. Yeah. Kin- kinematics really isn't as variable as all the other ones. Yeah, yeah. So it's really easy to do a systematic approach. You just say, oh, I need these three equations. Yeah. And then I need to just look at my variables, my own mm-hmm. knowns and unknowns, and then pick the equation with the most knowns. Gotcha. So kinematics is real simple. Yeah. Um, for people who are not aware, that's the projectile motion one. Yeah, yeah. It really quantifies like how a bullet, how far your bullet will go if you shoot it from a rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can use the kinematic equations for that. And actually, interestingly enough, you know, the equation takes on the form of a parabola. Yeah. That's actually an approximation. What do you mean? The real version of the kinematic equation is actually the ellipse. Interesting. Yeah. I, I was like, that. I don't know why I didn't realize that before, but I was like, oh, oh you're saying the, the, it has to do with like the Kepler's orbit shit. Gotcha. I don't yeah, know. I yeah, never yeah, tried yeah. to derive it though, but it's literally an ellipse. Like if you imagined a bullet that shot out all the way outside of um, Earth. Because the center of right around. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's you, revolving you're, around you're actually shooting it. It's actually an ellipse, an equation for an ellipse. It which just is, hits the ground. <laughs> Huh? It just hits the ground. Like it it, it, it it truncates because it hits the ground. Yeah, so you can approximate it. Yeah. You know, to a to a um parabola, parabola yeah. because it's close to earth. Yeah. But really if you had a real system, you have to approximate it to an ellipse. True. So Damn, it's kind man. of an interesting factoid if didn't you didn't even really think about that. That's yeah. so true. Someone blew my mind on Twitter like that. I was like, "Oh shit, I should have known that." <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of one of those things you're like, "Damn, I've been yeah. in physics for this long and didn't realize that." Uh, you know. But <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Um, I think that's it, man. I honestly, yeah. I'm, I, while you were talking, I wasn't really listening. I was trying to come up with more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all right. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta think of the audience first, right? I, I know. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> damn. Like, I guess that's it. I mean, but if you folks have any, have any, the... I got some. Oh, you do. You yeah, still I was got just more? thinking. Yeah, right, give me some. Well, maybe, maybe um, more relations. Okay. If you want to really think, I guess maybe this is almost a different topic, but yeah. Energy and momentum relations are. Oh, I, I was going to mention right? that. Actually, that one came through my head, but yeah. then. Uh, but you were like, "That's the wrong." Uh, I mean, no. I mean, conservation. It, it's an equivocation. I guess it's mm-hmm. also like the Heisenberg uncertainty mm-hmm. principle, in some way. Like you. What you, about like um, circuits? Ohm's nah. law, baby. Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law. Ohm's law is kind of fucked up too. You know why? Uh, um. Well, I'll just tell you. Sure. <laughs> I was trying to derive Ohm's Law from Maxwell's the other day, and I don't think you can do it, yeah, or at least can. I don't know how you could do it. I could do it. I've done it. You've derived Ohm's Law? I can show you, yeah. Yeah, you got to show me, because I was trying to figure it out, and I was like, the fuck, I can't derive this. Yeah, I could show you. And even when I was looking at Google, they were saying that you really couldn't derive it. You had to use, you have to use some conceptual arguments, I think. I got you, bro. All right, good. I got you. But can you do it full mathematically, or do you have to do full on conceptual? No, nah, no, nah, mixture. Got you. It's a mix. Okay. I Because what I was thinking is you should derive it from the um, from the del cross B formula because that one contains the... Um, the flux. Yeah. It, no, not the flux. It contains the um, the uh, current density. No, no, you don't use that one. Okay. Well, I don't know. I got you. Because <laughs> you're supposed to use the EMF equation. Anyway, we're, gonna, okay, we're, yeah, getting, we into, can, we're getting into... Yeah, the, but the EMF, EMF equation, like how do you get that? I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds I'll show good. you. I'll show you. Um, but uh, but yeah. Um, Ohm's law. I guess. See, I guess you can include that one. Let me. Let me. Think yeah, it's a classic. We're talking about relations. Um. Yeah. I think I mean, we got I, them all. I think we. I, 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 well, shout out to the important ones. N- well, Nether's theorem. I guess. Oh, Nether's more of a theorem. Yeah, really but you can. Yeah, exactly, and you can. You can show Nerthers and prove her stuff with yeah. the Lagrangian, right? Yeah, that's true. So it's but like, that kind of captures all the conservation principles. Yeah, exactly. It's not. But that's really why I want to mention that one. Yeah, it's a theorem. Hmm. Well, I think that's yeah. it. I if think you that's folks, <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> folks have any like have any equations that uh, we might have forgotten that 
I guess are mm-hmm. important. Or just any comments about mm-hmm. any of the ones we mentioned. Yeah. You know, yeah. leave a comment for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, Check out the websites, igenbros.com, yeah. igenbros on Twitter, igenbros on Instagram, igenbros2 on TikTok. Yeah. And thank you once again, patrons. We yes. really appreciate you guys. Shout out. And if you guys like us, you know, check us out on patreon.com slash I can bros. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, please leave, re- if you use iTunes to listen to this podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes, five stars. Mm-hmm. And, uh, maybe we'll read a couple. <laughs> You've been checking the iTunes. Has anybody le- um, left one since? I, I can, I can, I can check, but next time I will, um, I will definitely, uh, didn't we have like five reviews on, or five stars or, or five, uh, yeah, five reviews on iTunes last time. Did we? When I upload it, I don't really check it. I just look at. Oh, we get like some, some star ratings, some ratings. Oh, we do. Say. Yeah, yeah. Leave us a leave us a funny review. Maybe an inside joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, something, something. Uh, yeah, something funny. Um, oh, and I should preface with the Patreon. It's not always physics related. So, if you would like us to support us with the Patreon, don't expect like a bunch of physics. Me and Juan will well, just be sprinkling on sprinkled there. Sprinkled in. Yeah, but we... Uh, it's it's more about getting to know us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll talk all kinds of stuff. Politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, social life. You know? Yeah. Random shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, politics probably just turned off everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you Sorry, know, we, it's, it's more cultural <laughs> topics and stuff, but... Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like for Eigen Bros uh, on the iTunes, I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, no reviews, but please go ahead and leave us a review. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Actually, no. There are seven ratings. Yeah. Great. So somebody give it. There you go. All right. Yeah. Give us some more. P- prop Keep us up. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Oh, someone said right now, Axel Two Rose. <laughs> Here we go. Mean? Last year. Love the podcast, but one saying, yeah, yeah. Nonstop drives me off the wall. Please stop. <laughs> One yes is That's funny. definitely you, Juan. <laughs> Please keep keep up the good work. You didn't see me when we were doing the Wilford Riley yeah, yeah. podcast. I was I was kept hitting you. Oh, like this. is that what you were saying? You were like, mm-hmm, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to let the person know I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds really annoying for the audio okay, users because right, then right. you override what the other person's talking. Okay, but anyway, right. we'll we're working that later off the podcast. We're already going on too long, so. <laughs> no, now I'm hurt, Axel. No, I'm <laughs> All right, Axel. No, you know what? Constructive criticism. Thank you. I yep. will. A year later, almost. <laughs> I've taken this. <laughs> I hope I've gotten better We're slow. at it. It's all I, good. I hope I've gotten better at it. Please let me know if I haven't changed, edit the thing. Me, I want to know what you think, Axel. Let me. Uh-huh. Please leave all a right. comment. But yeah, please leave more comments, share, subscribe, mm-hmm. and thanks for listening. Thank you, folks. And we'll see you later.